Starting out our program was Vasil Hontarsky from Ukraine with a song called Chorna Black Mountains. Dobry den, shenovni radio suchachita vitayu vas vsih na radio peredachu nash holos, radio krinskoho korenya, jaka podjeti vam sjohani, tak jaki kožni serede, zudinasi toj do trinasi toj hodene, nahveli CHLY, stoj den i sim FM, umisti na najmo. Pri mikrofoni? Ci hodenu je Pavlina, a nastupnu hodenu bude z vame Oksana. Djakuju što rišale per bude z nama nastupne kdoh hoden, me majmo duže si kavi na vene nas jodnišnji programi. Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, coming to you on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm Paula demchuk Macquarie, Pukarinska Pavlina, and I'll be your host for this first hour. Oksana will be along at 12 noon to host the show in Ukrainian. I'm delighted to have you with us. We've got a great program lined up for you in this hour. Our recipe, um, unusual but very traditional Ukrainian recipe from the Nasholos Audio Archives. And last weekend, I caught up with Leanne Pocholik, who is one of the instructors of the Visna Ukrainian dancers in Nanaimo. And she'll be telling us all about their upcoming Christmas bazaar. We've also got Ukrainian Jewish heritage and part one of an interview with Alan Bernstein, the president of the Felstein Society in New York, regarding upcoming events in April and some interesting connections to Ukraine. As well, we've got our usual proverb of the week, other items of interest, and great Ukrainian music. And coming up next is music put to the words of a well-known Ukrainian poet by the name of Oles Bernik. And this is Vichna Taina Klechenas, Eternal Mystery Calls Us. Ти 
вічна тайна ближче, та хаво жака наказ, просторі курлище, вилітаю рідний край, всі, хто має крила, жде нас ясний небо край, жде вічна мила. Сонним містом крила лебедів несуть у висоти чисті. Розривай завісу сну, ніби павутину. Линьку не вагли вину, долю лебедину. Up next, from the Nasholos Audio Archives, Ukrainian Food Flair. Vatimo and welcome to Ukrainian Food Flair. Onions are used in cooking in practically every country in the world. In Ukraine, where it is called cebulia, onion has long been considered one of the most indispensable vegetable flavorings. Onions come in many varieties, varying in shape, size, weight, color, and pungency. The cause of the onion's strong smell and flavor is a volatile oil, rich in sulfur compounds. Because it causes crying without real cause, in Ukrainian folklore, the subulya is a symbol of hypocrisy. She rubbed her eyes with onions, is said about someone who pretends to cry. A tip to remember to avoid tears, which are nonetheless real, peel onions under running water. In the meantime, here is a recipe for onion salad courtesy Savella's Ukrainian Deli in Winnipeg. This salad is always a pleasant surprise to skeptics who think of onions only in terms of its strong flavor and smell. It's tangy and crunchy and an absolute delight to the taste buds. It's really quite simple. All you do is marinate sliced onions in a sweet and sour brine overnight, then dress it up. For this brine, you will need a half a cup of water, a half a cup of vinegar, three quarter cups of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of pepper. Use sweet onion and slice it very thin. A bit of red onion adds nice color. The brine keeps for a long time in the fridge, so you can make the salad in smaller batches if you like. Bring the brine ingredients to a boil to dissolve the sugar. Cool, then pour over onion slices. Allow to marinate for at least five hours or overnight. Remove onion from brine and drain well. Toss gently with mayonnaise to taste and sprinkle with celery seeds. Dopa bachinya and smach noho! This has been Ukrainian Food Flare from the Nasholos Audio Archives.
one from a vinyl recording made quite a few years ago, back in the 1980s, I believe. That was a group called Homing Stapil with the title track of that album, and that translates as Echo of the Steps. Coming up next, another little blast from the past, also by an artist from south of the border. This is Alexei Kurekesha with Fata Morgana and a traditional Ukrainian folk song Oy Upoli Nevka in the cornfield. that time of year again. Every year the Ukrainian Cultural Society of Nanaimo, or the Ukrainian Canadian Cultural Society of Nanaimo, holds its annual Christmas Bazaar. Now how long has this been going on, Leanne? Well, that's a very good question. Way before me, and I've been here eight years, probably since time began when they started the group <laughs> almost 30 years ago I'm going to assume more, more than 30 years yeah. ago probably yeah so it's a, it's a great little bazaar and um, the Ukrainian Canadian Cultural Society is I guess the parent of the Visna Ukrainian Dancers of Nanaimo and they are the main beneficiaries I guess of this fundraisers and Leanne you're what you've been one of the instructors for well since you've been here eight years yeah yeah. Yeah. So this fundraiser is taking place at St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish Hall on Saturday, December 1st. Yeah, it's our we have this every year. It's our annual event and one of our main fundraisers uh, for the year. We make good Ukrainian food and it's there for your pleasure of taking it home or you can eat it right in the hall as well. 
As, but speaking of food, you recently had a fundraiser this fall, just at the end of October. Yeah, we had a, a Bosch and a sausage on a bun night uh, mm-hmm. dinner fundraiser. Um, it was a couple weeks ago. It was well received. Um, we made um, approximately, I think it was around $1,200 or so, which is actually, it's really good. And we appreciate all the donations that uh, we had for our silent auction table from all the uh, vendors and individuals um, that helped uh, us raise their money that uh, we spent. Of course, every group desperately needs, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, to go traveling to uh, mission for the dance competition we do in May. And then, of course, any kind of costume upgrades and stuff that we may need throughout the year. Right, right. So um, then this fundraiser going on December 1st, what can people expect? Many things. We have uh, Boscht and frozen progies for sale. And then we have our homemade goodies tables for sale. We have our novelty table, a uh, variety of Ukrainian stuff that you can purchase. We have Ukrainian ornaments. We have cards and little knickknacks you can get for great Christmas gifts or stocking stuffers. Jean will be there with her Ukrainian eggs on display. You can buy them from her. Those are fantastic gifts for anyone. Mm-hmm. She has a different variety there. Sandy's Ukrainian Kitchen is going to be there with their cabbage roll table again. And then Vic and Lee are going to be there with their uh, jams and jellies and pickles and whatever such that they made in the summertime to sell as well. We start at 11 in the morning and go till 3. Our kitchen will be open Mm -hmm. and we are selling hot food that will have our pierogies there and uh, some sausages and um, boshed and whatever other little goodies that might be up there for sale as well. So I think it's worth mentioning that uh, those pierogies are hand-pinched by, uh, <laughs> yeah. by members of the society and dancers' parents and whatnot. Yeah, we, uh, we've we already done three sessions and we have one more to go before the bazaar and we usually make probably around 1,200 pierogies a session to sell at this bazaar and we always sell out. So uh, the earlier you get there, the better because <laughs> um, we don't guarantee that there's going to be something there at one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so if you're going for pierogies, then get there early. Yeah, and also our Bosch for us is for on sale as well. We'll have containers of Bosch as well. You can take home and freeze and or eat that night, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you desire. So what do you sell them for? Um, the progies are $5 a dozen and the Bosch is uh, $5 a container as well. Okay, and so that container will easily feed two people. Oh, easily, yeah. yeah. Unless you're really hungry, then it's a really good meal. <laughs> yeah. Great, so you have other stuff going on as well. Yeah, and we have raffle tickets to sell. Okay. You can win 5, 10, or 15 dozen pierogies. Yeah. Um, the draw is that day. If you know of anyone that's uh, belonged to the Vesna Ukraine dance groups, we have tickets on sale right now that they have in their hot little hands to sell. If, mm-hmm. So if you know one, ask them, hey, I want to buy some raffle tickets, go talk to them. Otherwise, you can get them at the door as well. Okay. And, and they're a dollar each. Dollar, a dollar for dollar a, per ticket. A chance yeah. to win some per, free pierogies. Frozen pierogies, yeah. Pretty good. Five dozen, ten dozen, or 15. Depends okay. on one, two, or three. Yeah, for a buck, that's yeah. Yeah, pretty, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Pretty good gamble, and yeah. even if you don't, uh, if you don't win, you still it's going to a good cause. That's right. Part of the fundraiser, <laughs> so, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Super. So again, it's Saturday, December first, at St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish Hall, four zero one seven Victoria Avenue, just off Norwell Drive. And all kinds of goodies again, just once once more through the list there, Leanne. <laughs> um, okay, our, bo- our we have a table that has our frozen progies and our Bosch containers to sell. Um, Sandy's Ukrainian Kitchen is going to be there with her selling her cabbage rolls. We have our homemade baking table, our novelty table, which will have a whole bunch of Ukrainian items you can buy for stocking stuffers. Um, Jean will be there with her Ukrainian eggs. Um, and then Vic and Lee will be there with their pickles and jam table. And it's all homemade from them, too. It's really good stuff. And the kitchen is open right from... Right at 11 o'clock. We open right there, right till 3. And we're going to sell our hot bosch and progies and our combo platters and our sausage. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few desserts in there you can buy as well. Okay, sounds like a great place to be on Saturday, December 1st. Thanks for telling us all about it. No and worries. That Yeah, it's great to, to talk here and get it out to the public and hope we see uh, new people come this year as well as the ones who've come in the past because it's greatly appreciated. So if you don't know if it's not a dancer and you want to get your ticket ahead of time. Well, you can email us or, or Facebook us and okay. send us a message. We do e-transfer now. Um, just send oh. me a message and we, we can get it done and we can fill in the raffle tickets for you as well. Okay, and so how would they reach you? Um, on Facebook, Vesna Ukrainian Dancers. V-E-S-N-A. 
Right. Dancers, dancers Nanaimo. Nanaimo. Okay. Yeah. Or I'm sure if you just type in Vesna Dancers Nanaimo in the yeah. little search, it will come right up as well. Okay. So that's the best way is, yeah. is, is on Facebook or Messenger yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Super. Leanne Pokalik, one of the dance instructors for Vesna Ukrainian Dancers and a member of the Ukrainian Canadian Cultural Society of Nanaimo. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, good luck with your bazaar. Great. Thank you.
a delightful Ukrainian folk dance called Orlitsya, and that is from a recording called Forgotten Songs of Ukrainians, and uh, we acquired this all back um, probably about at least 10 years ago, maybe more. Uh, the recording was made in 2005, and it is a collection of, I guess, there are Original recordings probably cleaned up quite a bit and enhanced, and they are from the 1920s and 30s. Not a whole lot of, in actually even some a bit earlier, not a whole lot of information. Um, I guess that's why the title, Forgotten Songs of Ukrainians, uh, a lot forgotten, but fortunately those melodies and those recordings were preserved. And again, that dance was called Orletsya. Ви слухайте радио передачу Наш Голос Радио Кримського Кориня на радіостанції CHLY 1017 FM у місті Нанаймо. Говорить Павлина. You're listening to Наш Голос Ukrainian Roots Radio on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm your host Павлина. And now for a look at Ukraine's rich Jewish heritage, then and now. Brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. This is Pavlina, producer and host of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio. The Felshtin Society is named after a Ukrainian shtetl called Felshtin, which today is the Ukrainian town of Havardiske. The Felshtin Society began as a benevolent society organized in 1905 in New York City, and it's still active today. One of the most notable of its ongoing humanitarian efforts over the past 113 years is the refuge and relief that the society provided to the survivors of the 1919 pogrom in Felshtin. 600 Jews perished in that brutal pogrom. In April of 2019, the Felshtin Society will hold commemorative events to mark the centenary of this tragic historical event. Last March, we spoke with the president of the Felshtin Society, Ellen Bernstein, who told us about the Society and its plans for these commemorative events. Recently, the Society announced some exciting new developments, which Ellen has kindly agreed to share with Nasholus listeners. We spoke by phone from his office in New York. So, Alan, welcome back to Nash Holis. Thanks very much. I appreciate your having me back. Well, it's it's great to have you, and this story is really fascinating to me, and I'm excited to hear about uh, what's, you know, the new developments. But just to refresh our listeners' minds, for those maybe who didn't catch the first interview, tell us um, a little bit about the society and the history behind it that um, is bringing these commemorative events to the fore next year. Well, uh, the Felshtin Society was begun as what was called a Landsmannschaft organization that uh, was founded originally in 1905 in New York and was basically something that people pulled together in order to be able to, first of all, deal with the issues of burial that they had a hard time dealing with in New York at that time because there were no consecrated Jewish cemeteries. Right. Well, there were very few, and there needed to be more. So they got together, and these people bought a plot of land in Staten Island. Other groups bought land in Long Island or in Queens or in, in other some of the outlying areas. And that was one of the primary reasons for them to be together was to have a burial society. And then there were other things as well. Of course, there was uh, social, there was support. And then after the pogroms happened in 1919, they became much more of a benevolent society because they collected money for not only for the people who were displaced from their homes and lost everything, a, a tremendous number of orphans that were left after the, their parents were killed in the, in the Ukraine, in Belarus, and in other parts of, of what was at one point the Russian Empire after the Russian Revolution, there were just thousands of kids all over the place that needed to be housed and clothed and fed and educated. So there were orphanages that sprung up all over the place. And these Landsmannschaft organizations were very instrumental, not only in collecting money directly among their own members and, and sending the money back and making visits, but they also 
were instrumental in connecting with important Jewish organizations like HIAS and um, Jewish Defense Council and things like that, that were also very supportive of these efforts to make sure that the kids uh, had a place to live and, and adequate clothing and food and, and education. So uh, that's that's where it started. And then in the 30s, in the 20s and the 30s, they were more focused on social activities and developing support networks for people who were building businesses and um, who were interested in doing a variety of other things. And eventually, in the late 30s, came to uh, the point where they decided that it would be a very important thing to write a book. So the Felstein Society's main focus of existence at that point became the writing of the book Right. Uh, in, in, from the early to the mid-30s, and it was published in 1937. And what happened was uh, people decided that it was okay for each of them to contribute a chapter. So some people contributed more than one chapter, and some mm-hmm. people contributed uh, other things aside from uh, sure. the written word, but right. uh, basically they got together and they and they put this wonderful book together, which we understand from uh, a number of scholars who uh, look at this type of literature and who feel that our book, the Felstein Yisker book, is what it's called, is a very strong model of, of the kind of uh, literature that was produced in response to these events. Right. And then, of course, when the Holocaust came and uh, the Germans invaded this part of the world, the rest of the Jews who were living in the town were slaughtered and buried in a mass grave uh, in the town. So um, the society persisted pretty much on a very uh, regular basis through the 70s. And then people began to die off and the original members uh, Mm -hmm. were no longer interested or no longer capable of participating. So things really died off until about the 90s when we began to become much more interested in the book and the translation of the book, which was written largely in Yiddish, Mm -hmm. and uh, trying to see what we could do to maintain the society. So we had a 10-year anniversary reunions, uh, one in 1999 and one in 2009. And five or six years ago, we decided that it was uh, very important for us to think about what we could do to commemorate the centennial of this uh, of the pogrom that occurred in, in Felstein. And we began talking about it with a number of people, including like the Evo Institute and the Uh, Museum of Jewish Heritage and other significant Jewish cultural uh, organizations in the city, and slowly but surely came up with the picture of that possibility as something that really the Felstein Society was pretty much the only functional, or one of the main functional organizations of its kind that was left, and it was really going to be up to us to not only shine some light on the events that happened in Felstein, but really to look beyond that and look at the events that occurred throughout Eastern Europe at that time. uh, Again, in the Ukraine, in Belarus, Poland, Lithuania, you know, it was just a a very wide range of Mm -hmm. geographical area where these things took place. Yeah, it was called the Pale of Settlement, I guess, right? Yes, that was called the Pale of Settlement until... I think, until 1912, or something like that. 1917, it was a provisional government. 1917, yeah. okay, that's when that's when it was, yes. So yeah. um, this is pretty much where we came, and we then began to put together a program that we thought was going to be meaningful. And uh, we've been working on it now steadily for about two years, and uh, we're looking forward to having our event on April 14th of 2019 at the Center for Jewish History in Manhattan, uh, right off Union Square. And uh, it's a very wonderful place. It's a beautiful building that houses the Center for Jewish History itself, as well as the Evo Institute. And there's a cultural center. It's a really wonderful repository of uh, valuable information, documents from the old world, documents from the United States that people brought over. It has an enormous archive. And it has been a great a source of support and a tremendous resource to us going forward and trying to put this event together. It sounds like it's it's going to be an incredible event. And you're connecting up with people 
all around the world pretty much to commemorate it as well and to to remember this is a story that kind of got became almost cliched you know after fiddler on the roof you know people kind of knew there were these these pogroms back ancient history right but it's important to not just consign these things to the dustbin of, of history because it's important to remember history can repeat itself. And, you know, we may be, for all we know, on the cusp of, of repeating terrible mistakes of history ourselves. So it's, it's a very good thing to be commemorating these events as, as you're doing now. So before we go on, I just wanted to ask you for some clarification um, the term that you mentioned, uh, land, land, what is that word? Landsmannschaften. Right, yeah. What does that mean? Landsmannschaft is, is basically neighbors. Oh. A, a landsman is a neighbor, is somebody who comes from your town or from your neighborhood or from your shtetl in that case. Uh-huh. So the Landsmannschaften organizations were groups of people who gathered primarily around the towns that their families came from. Okay, all right. So uh, let's go back then to the um, commemorations are going to be taking place in April. Uh, Yes, in Manhattan, yes. Okay. So you've been planning this. You said actually you started thinking about this six years ago, and but plans have actually been going on for the past two years. And so you've got the location set and you've got the date set and, and you're planning the events as well. But you've had something, you recently put out this press release. So a really interesting and exciting development has happened in Ukraine. So tell us about the connection there and the actual site of, of this town, which no longer exists, right? Well, it, it's fascinating because we don't really know how it happened. Oh. So we're kind of doing our own uh, private detective work <laughs> trying to have exactly how this came to pass. We suspect that one of our members, uh, one of our Felsteiners, who actually was born in Felstein and who grew up in Felstein and whose family survived, even though they were Jewish, because they passed for Catholic. Oh. Uh, this lady, uh, her name is Paulina Lerner, uh, went back to visit Felstein this past spring. And I believe it's as a result of her visit to Felstein that the uh, local Catholic priest got involved. And uh, so I think that she happened to, when she was there, meet with the principal of the school, a fellow by the name of Yuri Fedorov, and they talked about uh, what kind of sustained activities there could be that would bring the history, the full history of the town, to light for the school children. And they talked about the possibility of establishing a museum-type display in this, in one of the corridors of the school where they have glass-enclosed mm-hmm. display cases. And, and wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do a, you know, a visual depiction of what the town was like 100 years ago wow. and talk about the Jews and talk about how things came to pass? Now, they had that discussion. I believe that that discussion spilled over to the Catholic clergy. Oh. And then we got this wonderful letter from Father Peter, who said to us that we're going to have a uh, a memorial on the date of the pogrom, where we, we pledged to have 600 people with candles lit in the town. Oh, wow. And uh, we think that's a, a very powerful thing, and it's a wonderful uh, message for the town to send and for the church to become involved in and for us to be able to feel that our ancestors will be remembered in that way on that day. So it's a really wonderful thing, and we're hoping to be able to work with other priests in the local area and maybe even, you know, get it to spread a little bit. You know, for instance, uh, Kemelnitsky, which is only about 12 or 15 miles away, Mm -hmm. might be, you know, another town where we, we, we could... Uh, attempt to uh, reach out to the local clergy and see if they wouldn't participate. Kamelnitsky itself has a synagogue that we're establishing communications with, but we're we're hoping that the activity of of Father Peter will spread to other communities that suffered suffered similarly in those days. Oh, yeah, what a great gesture of reconciliation. And yes, maybe we I can, think so. 
yeah, maybe can we heal the wounds of the past and, and move forward as, you know, I think people hoped over the centuries. Um, so what is the name of this church? It's it's St. Wojciech Parish. Okay, and it's it's Roman Roman Catholic? Yes, and Father Peter is also inviting the Orthodox, the uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, clergy to participate as well. Wow. So it's not only going to be Catholic. That's amazing. And, uh, you know, and of course, we're hoping that we're going to be able to get the uh, the synagogue and Kemalnitsky oh. involved. And uh, we'll see what happens. I've been speaking with Alan Bernstein, president of the Felshton Society in New York. Next week, in part two of this interview, Alan will share more details about the Society's phenomenal connection with a school and a Catholic church in Ukraine, eager to help shed light on their town's lost Jewish heritage. Meanwhile, for more information about the Felshton Society and the history of the Jewish shtetl, Felshton, visit their website, www.felshton.org, F-E-L-S-H-T-I-N, www.felshton.org. So, until next time, Shalom. Ukrainian Jewish Heritage is brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. To find out more about their work, visit their website and follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Transcripts and audio files of this and earlier broadcasts of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage are available at their website, ukrainianjewishencounter.org as well as at the Nasholos website, www.nasholos.com. Vyslúchejte Radio Peredáču Nasholos, Radio Krínskoho Koríňa, na radiostanci CHLY 101 FM, umístěné najmo. Hovorit Pavlína. You're listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm your host this hour, Pavlina. Up next, a group from Alberta. They are a family orchestra. They're called the Churchill Orchestra. They put out quite a few albums. They've been around a long, long time, and they have preserved that wonderful old-time sound. Here they are from their CD, uh, released in uh, 2007. The tradition continues. And another Ukrainian folk dance, maybe not strictly Ukrainian, given the title, the Gypsy Shatis.
what's happening this week in Central Vancouver Island's Ukrainian community. The parishioners of St. Mary's Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Parksville invite you to join them for services every first and third Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. After Divine Liturgy, enjoy fellowship in the hall, special events, and commemorations. Plus, you can stock up on homemade pierogies and pies from noon till 1 p.m. St. Mary's Ukrainian Orthodox Church is located in Parksville at 594 Carl's Way. For more information, visit them online at vanisleparochial.ca or find them on Facebook. The parishioners of St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Church in Nanaimo invite you to Divine Liturgy on Saturdays at 11 a.m., followed by Fellowship in the Hall. St. Michael's is located at 4017 Victoria Avenue in Nanaimo. The next two Saturdays, there will be special presentations in the Hall after Divine Liturgy. On Saturday, November 17th, Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky, A Gift to Humanity. And on Saturday, November 24th, a screening of the award-winning Holodomor film, Bitter Harvest. For rentals, pierogi sales, and more information, call St. Michael's at 250-758-4714 or visit their new website, stmichaelnanaimo.ca. The Vesna Ukrainian Dancers rehearse every Tuesday and Wednesday evening from September to June at St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Parish Hall, 4017 Victoria Avenue in Nanaimo. For information about their upcoming performances, as well as their Christmas Bazaar, happening on Saturday, December 1st, email visnadancers at gmail.com or visit their Facebook page. On Saturdays at 6 p.m., tune in to the Vancouver edition of Nash Holos on AM 1320 or streaming online at am1320.com. As well, the international edition airs on AM, FM, shortwave, and satellite radio in over 20 countries on the PCJ Radio Network. You can get the podcast links at the Nash Holos website. And here in Nanaimo, Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio broadcasts live every Wednesday to the north and central Vancouver Island, Gulf Island, Sunshine Coast, northwest Washington State, and greater Vancouver listening areas. So at 11 a.m. every Wednesday, please join me, Pavlina, and at 12 noon, Oksana, for two hours of the best in Ukrainian news, folklore, and music here on CHLY, Radio Malaspina, 101.7 FM on the radio dial, and streaming online at chly.ca. In between broadcasts, make sure to follow Nash Holos and Oksana and me on Facebook and Twitter. And for audio archives, transcripts, podcast feeds, and more, visit our website at www.nashholos.com. And the inimitable Mickey and Bunny from Winnipeg with a traditional Ukrainian folk song about a nah, kind of a near do well kind of guy. Kalabai. Tsihudenu Bulaz Vame Pavlina. Nahadu you visuhite radio pratamu nash holos radio nasha ho kurinya. Zalashaita sis name in the stupnu hudenu. Dali peredu mikrofonu oksani. Zaprosiu posluhit troche pro historio i tredeci iros povist oksana. Ale pri tem ja hoću izalašiti vas s kim slovama mudrosti. Toy lekše hlib zdobuvaja, kto fah je kesmaja. And our proverb of the week translates as he who knows some sort of trade earns his bread more easily. Well, with that, we've come to the end of our program, and I've got one last toe tapper for you. It is by request, and it is by a group from Winnipeg called Sluhai. Adele will wrap it up just for you with Tsinasha Zamnya. This land is our land. 
And that brings us to the end of the first hour of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. Please stay with us as Oksana takes over the microphone to host the next hour. Meanwhile, please join me here again next Wednesday from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. And until then, do stay in touch with both Oksana and me via our Facebook page and Twitter. If you're able to catch the live transmission of the show, make sure to use the fantastic new media player at www.chly.ca. If you miss the live transmission of any show, you can always catch the podcast. There's a media player as well as a link to the Nash Holos podcast feed at our website, www.nashholos.com. We're also on Mixcloud along with the other fine programs here on CHLY 101.7 FM. So stay tuned next for the Nash Hollis Ukrainian Hour with Oksana, followed by Wellness Wednesday to learn how to be healthy naturally. And at 2 p.m., join Gord Bibby for two hours of great oldies on Groovin' with Bibby G. I'm Pavlina. Thanks so much for listening. Do zusirichi. Це наша земля, це наша по